The new Trace Rifle, Aruna's Effigy, took the community by surprise with how it works and what it brings to the player base. Now, if you don't know, the Runa's Effigy upon kills transmutes your targets into a small ball of energy that you can use for light attacks, blocking or doing a large slam attack for high damage and a wide radius blast as well. Now, we've not seen an exotic like this before, but it does make it a very unique exotic by design and function. So, I've managed to play around with it to see if there's any crazy combos that can make the weapon even more powerful, and I've come across one of the most simplest and easiest to create combo builds that will provide you with near infinite super at your disposal. It's so simple, in fact, that you can easily overlook it because of what it requires. Greetings everyone, Freedia Hero here, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video for this week's content. I hope everything's going well on your end and you've had a lovely week, as today's build will provide you with the means to gain super energy by the bucket loads via Doomfang Pauldrons and Ruinous Effigy. And this will be very handy in content to where you need to face waves upon waves of enemies all at once. This simple but easy to create build can be used by everyone as long as you have the following gear. And as long as you tick that box off, you can have a consistent rotor of super at your usage, all the time, wherever you are. So starting things off, the subclass of today's pick will be the Code of the Aggressor, and this is to make use of the two perks within the tree line. In the trenches, which reduces our super cooldown while surrounded by enemies, and the second shield, which allows us to use our shield two times within our super. Now all of this will come back to our usage of our exotic weapon and doomfang. With the two combined further, we can essentially make having our super up freely and ready within a few seconds compared to within a few minutes. The good thing about this now is that once we achieve our super, we can further extend our super by throwing our shields. Doing this will extend our current super for longer than it should be, and makes it very handy for taking on large waves of tough enemies that everyone is struggling with. Now the only downside to this is that outside of not using the exotic weapon to proc a orb and then use the melee option, the build becomes pretty standard from there unless you improve on your melee stat as a backup. Of course, we do also have the shield bash perk available as an alternative which is handy for disorientating and suppressing targets on the go. Outside of this, this is the one and only best code to work with that will correspond with the exotic and mods and will provide you with the boost that will overall complete the set. You could try Code of the Commander with its Control Demolitions perk and the Resupply perk and try taking your abilities to enemies as this will allow you to gather super quickly as well. But it won't have that high of an effect compared to the Code of the Aggressor which is a bit more effective in terms of gathering your super. For grenades, I'm using the Void Warp for its effectiveness of covering ground and cutting and charging enemies off completely. At the same time, suppressor grenades are a good choice to use as well for suppressing large groups of enemies and handy when in a pinch, although it can backfire if you're within this radius as well. For the weapons, our main focus is the Ruin's Effigy, which is a must have for the build, of course. For your primary heavy, this can be down to you, but I would advise you to have a primary that you can quickly pull out and use in case of an emergency and your heavy to be something reliable but effective. Within my primary slot, I've chosen to go with the Breach Light Sidearm with Elemental Capacitor, Demoliciousness and Tactical Mag. My go-to sidearm of choice with great stats, this will be my backup weapon to use when I need something quick and slick within a pinch. It hits quite hard for being an aggressive sidearm, and as it's a burst variant, you'll be able to pace your shots upon landing crits, which will be handy against the Hive Knights with swords or the Fallen Captains. Generally, anything that would chase you down and you need to back away slowly while firing. Of course, if you are a sidearm user and you prefer something a bit more hard hitting, then shotguns like the Perfect Paradox with its high rate of fire, ammo capacity and overall damage is a alternative choice to pick. For secondary, we have the Ruinous FG Trace Rifle, the main weaponry that we will be using throughout the entirety of the build. Now like I mentioned earlier within the video, this Trace Rifle is much more unique and slightly more powerful compared to all the other Trace Rifles in the game, as it can offer the user the ability to transform enemies into a small orb that we can then use them as a shield, use a light attacks or even heavy attacks, the choices are there. The 3 in 1 option being provided allows our current build to go with whatever option the player feels like, although there will always be best options to pick, for example. Using the shield option is great when being surrounded, as you can take out multiple enemies in one go and also proctor in the trenches perk 
for reduced cooldown on your super. On top of that, its catalyst can also increase the amount of damage you do to enemies when you tag them with your spear, and then use your trace beam attack as well. Plus, if you decided to add on further mods such as the charge with light mod and a high energy fire mod, you can keep up a consistent damage phase there and then against say for example a boss. And it can work very well, but a bit more experimentation will need to be done first just to see how effective it is. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the catalyst as I am still in the process of unlocking it, and there's not that much need within the build to be quite honest. But if you can manage to get it, then more power to you. And then lastly, your heavy will be of your choice, but I've chosen to use the Berenger's memory with Shield Disoriate, Cloud Cartridge, and Sticky Grenades. I will be mainly using this one against bosses or ultras, but as the weapon has sticky grenades, which are handy for laying down those makeshift traps, and shield sonyate as well, in clustered areas we can fully protect ourselves and others from advancing enemies thanks to the laid out grenades we have in place. Plus, if any enemy with the following shield type comes along and tries to get up close to us, they will be disoriented by the grenades, which can be widespread to other enemies as well as charging at us. Of course, this only works if they have the same shield type that matches my current weapon's affinity. Now this is very handy if we combine it with the suppressor grenades and shield bash for an overall disorienting lockdown build. I can see this being useful in the much more tougher content where enemies are a lot more aggressive, like the Nightfall for example. Another thing I'd like to also point out is that our heavy has a very high velocity rate, is a rapid fire frame, and also has the clown cartridge perk, which can overflow a weapon after reloading randomly. Now this may seem normal to some people, but it is actually a very unique combo that in terms of DPS, you're getting a lot out of it. Now, the high velocity means you can fire your weapon incredibly fast in a short time frame. The frame type provides a small boost in reload speed upon using up all your ammo, and clown cartridge can provide even more ammo in your magazine for a much more larger DPS in one sitting, but this is 50-50. I would recommend you get this role like I currently have and give it a try and see if this is something worth investing in. I can see this role being handy in the future if Bungie decides to increase the eternal damage for grenade launchers in general, but that's if. For the time being, I can see this working in some content where you don't need to be too serious about DPS against bosses. Now for the stats, we aren't going to be heavily focusing on our int stat, as the build can pretty much build up our super within a short time frame. Plus, as it's being used in PvE, building up our super in this area will be easily achievable, so in our case, I have left it within the 20 ranges, so we can work towards building up a super like normal. Of course, if you wish, you can push your int stat to around the 50 areas for a 4 minute 31 second cooldown. This in practice means while you're not in combat, your super level will naturally increase, but a bit more faster. For the rest of the stats, I focus them into the resilience and recovery area as normal, so we can tank shots and recover at a faster rate. Resilience has been left in the 50s area, as going over doesn't lead to anything more unless you want to focus on providing more barriers. Recovery is at 61, can be made higher if you have the armor or mod spacing available to do so. And lastly, our discipline stat is at the 50 ranges for a 0.59 second cooldown. And this is more due to my armor pieces providing the necessary stats, rather than me needing this to be so high, but it's also rather handy nonetheless. Next for the armor, you will need the current season and season 10 armor pieces to start in the necessary mods I'm working with. You'll need one solar affinity armor for the sustained charge mod to become charged with light, or just any armor for the taking charge mod instead. You'll then need one arc affinity armor for the striking light mod, and then lastly one void affinity armor for the stacks and stacks mod, or a solar piece again for the supercharged mod. Exotics, as mentioned, we will be using the Doomfang Pauldron with Void Affinity, so nothing specific is required here unless you want it to correspond with your weapon type. With all this explained, here are the mods you're going to need to have now. Head, Resilience, Pulse Rifle Ammo Finder and Striking Light mod, Arm, Recovery mod, Chest, Recovery and Stacks on Stacks mod, Leg, Recovery and Sustained Charge mod, Mark, Concussive Dampener, Oppressive Darkness and Hands On mod. With everything all set out and created, you have a nifty build for creating an all out super build with nothing but an orb, 
a few powered millis and a hefty amount of shields to keep you going for ages. Now to be fair, the Doomfang and Runa's combo isn't what you think and that is using the orbs you create to proc the Doomfang's exotic trait as the orbs you create are void. Now I've tested this many times and I tried this with and without the exotic attached to see the difference and yet all of my results are the same so sadly nothing groundbreaking. But that's not where the build comes to an end. The build is practically super useful if we use the in the trenches perk to its full capabilities by getting ourselves surrounded and then using our shield option or melee option to reduce our super cooldown. This from what I can tell is where we get a lot of super coming our way and as you can see from the tribute hall I'm getting quite a hefty amount my way to the point of easily filling up my super bar in a mere few seconds. So you're probably thinking, what's the gauntlets needed for then? Well, as we learned the hard way that the Runa's effigy doesn't proc Doomfang Exotic, we will combine that with the Shield Bass and Second Shield Perk from the subclass. As both of them rely on the melee usage, and both of them are powered melee which correspond with the Exotic. You can see what I mean by this now, right? Using the Runa's effigy to create orbs and getting myself surrounded to proc in the trenches will allow me to build up my super quickly to which changing into my super afterwards and then use my shield throw or me option can allow me to sustain my super for a very very long time. Now rinse and repeat against large scale enemy events and you'll be able to proc orbs of light and defeat a multitude of enemies very easily for a hefty amount of time than normal. The steps are simple and easy to follow and don't require a lot from you to execute which as you can see anyone who can get these following equipment and gear can easily do. Now with that I also decided to add in some other further mods to enhance the build in other areas as well such as the oppressive darkness mod for a large debuff on the enemies and bosses alike and the striking light mod to create orbs via mini with my subclass shield bash will come into as well. The mod also has a secondary effect of reducing damage while I'm sprinting as well which with the fact that I will always be running around a lot with the setup anyways makes a perfect match for its simple background effect. So if you're wondering why I have the pulse rifle and refined in my armor slot and I'm not even using a pulse for it in general, well there's your answer. You can even use this build in PvP as well, although you probably won't get a lot of successes with it compared to its PvE counterpart, to where it being used in the public events, strikes, nightfalls and gambit is where you'll see this build be most useful in. Overall, a very new and very efficient take on getting your super up and ready within a short time frame and then further extending your super way beyond its limit which for the more laid back players may be everything you simply just want. I can see this being very popular for those who just want to super everything and breeze through content but in a different way than normal. So if you're a titan player who's looking for something simple but easy to main and you have these two gears to simply use within the game and you want a different method in terms of getting your super up and early there and then but you don't want to put too much effort into the game then this build here will serve you well and more and you probably will be using this until the next expansion comes or maybe you're just using on and off but whatever you decide to use it this build will serve you extremely well so if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.